Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, we're going to be covering the second part of my STI series, Sexually Transmitted Infections. We're going to be going over gonorrhea. So before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video, press that thumbs up button, press the red notification bell so you'll be notified every single time a new video is released, and also please subscribe to my channel if you have done so already. Something else to keep in mind, I'm now offering bookings for the ge next generation and Clex. Okay. I'm giving you a boost where I go over the important topics you need to know, how to answer those type of questions, the type of new questions you should expect to see and how to think critically through them. So you can book for your review and also grab an audio lesson or two from my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Okay, guys, without any further ado, let's get started. Rhea. What type of bacteria is gonorrhea caused by? Is it gram-negative bacteria, viral bacteria, fungal bacteria, or gram-positive bacteria? And two of the answer choices I completely made up, so you guys better not choose it. What type of bacteria is gonorrhea caused by? Correct answer. Very good. Most of you guys chose the correct answer. Gram negative bacteria. So um, before I go over the correct answer, let me talk about the wrong answer choices and we're going to go back to the correct answer. There is no such thing as viral bacteria. You can be a virus or you can be a bacteria. You can't be both. I made that up. There's no viral bacteria and there's no fungal bacteria. You could be a fungus or you can be a bacteria. So I made these two up right here. And then you have gram negative and gram positive bacteria. Gram positive bacteria is a type of bacteria that you tend to see above the belt. So those type of bacteria Bacterias tend to be your otitis medias, your ear infections. They tend to be your strep throats. They tend to be your pneumonias, those type, those type of bacterial effect infections that you see above the belt. Now, the correct answer, which is gram-negative bacteria, gram-negative bacteria are the types of bacteria you tend to see below the belt. Those tend to be your urinary tract infections, your uh, bacterial um, sexually transmitted infection. You tend to see those below the belt. And so when it comes to uh, gonorrhea, it is caused by a gram negative bacteria. True or false? Ejaculation does not have to occur for gonorrhea to be transmitted. Is that true or is that false? For those that could make it on the Kahoot, if you're on the live, go ahead, put in your answers. What do you guys think? Good. Ejaculation does not have to occur for transmission for gonorrhea to be transmitted. And that's actually true. It's a myth. A lot of people think that ejaculation has to occur. No, it doesn't. And it can still be transmitted. True or false? The infection of gonorrhea confers subsequent reinfection. Is this true or is this false? It's false. Just because you've been infected with gonorrhea um, once doesn't mean that you can't be reinfected. You can be reinfected. This often happens. You can be reinfected over and over and over again. It's very important. Once you've been infected with gonorrhea and you're treated, you have to go back and um, be tested again to make sure that um, you're still not positive. That's number one. And it's very important that you teach a patient to practice safer sexual practices because they absolutely can be reinfected with um, the sexually transmitted infection. Select all that applies. What are the most common clinical manifestations in men when it comes to gonorrhea? What are the most common uh, clinical, clinical manifestations in men? We have breast pain, headache, urethritis, dysuria, purulent urethral discharge, epididymitis. What do you guys think?
We're talking about men. And don't forget, guys, you treat your true, you treat your select all that applies as true or false. All right, signs and symptoms in men. Breast pain, false, no. Headache, false. Urethritis, yeah. The urethra, where the urine goes from the bladder and out through the penis, yep. Inf inflammation of the urethra, yes. Dysuria, painful urination, yes. Purulent urethral discharge. That purulent drainage that you'll see from the tip of the penis, yep. And epididymitis, absolutely inflammation of the epididymis. Remember, that's where um, the, what do you got, call it? The, the semen is stored. Select all that applies. What are the most common clinical manifestations in women? So now we're looking for the signs and symptoms in women. Select all that applies. So again, you're going to treat as true or false. Here are your choices. Increased vaginal discharge, dysuria, urinary frequency, bleeding after sexual intercourse, cervical redness, cervical swelling. And guys, just an FYI, I put the dollar sign here because last time I had this word, my video got flagged and it was a headache getting it unflagged. So I just put this dollar sign here. So hopefully it doesn't get flagged, but it has nothing to do with the exchange of money for that act. Let's just be clear. All of them. All of these are common clinical manifestations that we see in women. Increased vaginal discharge, uh, painful urination, urinating quite often, painful bleeding after intercourse, that cer uh, cervix being uh, swollen, edematous, and red. True or false? In gonorrhea, women are more symptomatic than men. Is this true or is, it, is this false? Look at this, guys. It's false. It's false. When it comes to gonorrhea, uh, men are more symptomatic. And because um, they're the ones who tend to have symptoms, right? They'll go to get help and they'll get the treatment that's needed. Women tend to be asymptomatic. Now, if they're symptomatic, those symptoms that we just went over in the last slides, those are the most common clinical manifestations that we'll see. But women tend to be asymptomatic. And this causes such a huge problem because they have this and they don't know. And it can cause some serious complications. One of the biggest complications, um, pelvic inflammatory disease. So for, in gonorrhea, you do have to uh, know that women uh, are less symptomatic than men, which delays treatment, which can cause a lot of complications down the road. True or false? Epididymitis is a serious complication that can cause the male to be infertile. Is this true or is this false? It's true. So think about it. Um, the epididymis, that's where the sperm is stored. Now this area, and remember the sperm will go from the epididymis up the, you know, Vans deference, right? But now the epididymis, it's been inflamed. 
think about what's happening here. This can cause sterility for the male. Epididymitis is for the male what pelvic inflammatory disease disorder is for the female. Just like PID, that inflammation of a female a reproductive tract that can cause the woman to be infertile, well, epididymitis for the male can cause the male to be infertile. For the women to be sterile, I should say. The women sterile and the male inf uh, infertile. You know what I mean. Select all that applies. For women, untreated gonorrhea can cause PID, increasing the risk for what? Select all that apply. I'm sorry, I forgot this was a question. I gave you the answer already, but select all that apply. Multiple fetal pregnancies, ectopic pre pregnancy, infertility, chronic pelvic pain, decreased pain, or you know, Professor D, I have no idea about this disease. I need to read more. This is select all that apply. There's more than one answer. What are the complications of a pelvic inflammatory disease in women? You know one answer, I just gave it to you on the last slide, but do you know the others? Guys, you see my green eyeshadow? Happy St. Patty's weekend. Hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. Okay, so let's talk about the answers. No, not multiple pregnancies. PID won't do that, but it can cause ectopic pregnancy, which can also cause um, sterility in women, right? What is ectopic pre uh, pregnancy? When that fertilized egg is... Um, when it attaches anywhere but the uterus, when it's implanted anywhere but the womb, that's an ectopic pregnancy. And that pregnancy will, it won't, the fetus will not survive. No way. Yes, it can cause infertility. Absolutely, it can cause chronic pelvic pain. One of the worst kinds of pain you'll ever feel in your life. False to decrease pain. If anything, the pain's gonna be increased. <laughs> and one person said they have no clue about this disease. Well, you were honest. Make sure you read about it because this is, disorder is important to know. True or false? If a neonate gets gonococcal conjunctivitis from exposure to an infected mother during birth, it can cause blindness. Is this true or is this false? True. Everyone chose the correct answer. You guys saw that purulent discharge that was drainage that was coming out of um, that uh, newborn's eyes absolutely can cause blindness. True or false? Gonococcal conjunctivitis is also known as ophthalmia, ophthalmia neonatorium. Is this true or is this false? True. It's also known as ophthalmia neonatorum. True. What is the treatment for ophthalmia neonatorum? Is it erythromycin ointment? Is it ampicillin ointment? Is it cephalaxin, cephalaxin ointment? Or is it syphilis ointment? Okay, good guys. The correct answer is erythromycin ointment. Very important to know it's applied to the eyes after birth. Um, ampicillin, uh, this is an antibiotic. Cephalaxin is an antibiotic. Syphilis, good. Nobody chose syphilis. Syphilis is an STD. So there is no STD ointment, right? Very good. We're going to give the um, a newborn erythromycin ointment. It will be applied to the eyes. True or false? Infected persons should be instructed to, in, to avoid sexual contact and alcohol during treatment. Is this true or is this false?
Very good. It's true. You're going to teach them no sexual contact and no alcohol. And you guys know that you never take alcohol with medications. All sexual partners within 60 days of diagnosis should be evaluated and treated. Is this true or is this false? Oh, it's true. And don't forget, guys, after being uh, treated, uh, they have to come back and be retested just to make sure that um, this um, bacterial infection is clear. Last question. Select all that applies. The first line treatment for gonorrhea is dual therapy with which two medications? Select all that apply. Ceftriaxone, uh, Rocephin IM. Ceftriaxone and Rocephin by mouth, azithromycin IM, or azithromycin by mouth. Which two medications are the first line treatment for gonorrhea? What do you guys think? Awesome. Okay, guys. So these are the two medications you expect to be um, ordered. You expect the patient to get the rocephin intramuscularly, and you expect them to get azithromycin by mouth. They're going to get both of these for the treatment of gonorrhea. You guys did a wonderful job. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for watching. In the comment section, please let me know what you thought about this video, what you'd like to see me cover, or maybe I've covered it already, you'd just like to see me cover it more extensively. Please don't forget to mention the format that you'd like me to cover the information. Do you want it in a Kahoot? Do you want it in a lecture? Do you want it in test questions type format? So go ahead and let me know in the comment section. Don't forget, you can book for an NCLEX review or get an audio lesson on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you so much. So much for watching and you guys will catch me on the next video.